Want to find out how the mechanics of the menagerie work and what to do when you actually get to fight the six different bosses? Well, in today's video, I'm going to tell you guys exactly how each mechanic for each individual stage works in the menagerie. As of the, this is Laserbolt, and today I'm going to be telling you guys step by step all the information you need to know in regards to the menagerie and how to complete each section or each stage of the menagerie. In addition to that, guys, if you guys are watching this video, I'm pretty sure you guys already know how to unlock the menagerie. If for some reason you guys don't, highly recommend you guys check out my challenge of opulence guide in case you're having difficulty unlocking the menagerie now after playing the menagerie multiple times i've come to find out that there are people who know the mechanics and there's people who don't know the mechanics the more people we have that know the mechanics the better and faster way we're going to be able to complete the menagerie the menagerie takes usually between 20 to 40 minutes depending on the group you're running in i played it with a group who has been really low leveled and had no idea what to do except for myself and it took us a total of 40 minutes i played it with a group that knows exactly what they're doing it took us 23 minutes so as you guys can see there is a big difference on knowing the mechanics of the menagerie so if all of this sounds like something you guys are definitely interested in, a like rating would be greatly appreciated let's get this video to 100 likes but without further ado let's go ahead and get started when you launch the menagerie of course you're gonna have to be 690 or higher remember the ads do tend to scale up all the way to 720 so you're gonna need a little bit of firepower when entering the menagerie when you do, the first stage you're going to have to encounter is lighting the lanterns. You're going to notice that once you land into the room, there is going to be a little callous face right in front of you. That's what's going to trigger or start the encounter. But before you do that, as a pro tip, if this is the first time entering the menagerie, I would suggest jumping in the middle section. There's going to be a piece of lore that you're going to want to collect. So make sure you guys collect that before you start the encounter you're also going to be given the option to place a rally flag so everybody can get their super so make sure you guys bring enough in your inventory once you guys are ready to go go up to the little callus head and press x and activate the encounter now you can press a different button if you're on pc or on playstation 4 once the encounter begins you're going to notice that there's going to be a bunch of ads that are going to be spawning sometimes it could be hive Sometimes it could be Vex. It all depends, but it's going to be pretty much the same rule of thumb. You're going to want to look for the yellow bar enemies. The yellow bar enemies are the ones that are going to be giving you guys the little kind of little fire to light the lanterns. Basically, what you got to do is kill the yellow bar enemies. Once you kill the yellow bar enemies, two things are going to happen. There's going to be two balls that drop and there's also going to be a boss that spawns. What you will need to do is collect the little ball and within the game, it's going to tell you exactly where to light up the lantern if you light up the wrong lantern you're going to cancel out the lighting of the lantern so make sure you guys go to the correct lantern which is indicated within the game and activate the lantern you're going to need to do this a total of six times once you light all six lanterns, you completed stage number one in the menagerie. One thing I want to mention is remember that the order is not always the same after you complete the first part. You could get a different order, so just make sure you guys reference to the video on which stage you're going to next after you light up the lanterns. The next stage we're going to be tackling is the crystals. Now the crystals is actually a very interesting one. If you played any of the last raids in Destiny, you guys are going to be quite familiar with this one because we're going to be killing Vex. Now what makes this encounter interesting is the fact that we also have to shoot crystals, hence the name the crystals. What's going to happen is you're going to place your rally barricade, you're going to start the encounter by clicking the head of Callus once again, and then there's going to be a bunch of Vex spawning. Of course, kill as many Vex as you possibly can. Once you begin killing the Vex, you're going to notice that there's going to be a big Manitar that spawns in the middle. But that's not the only thing you need to pay attention to because there are also going to be Harpies on the left hand side and right hand side that are yellow bars you're going to need to destroy these harpies because in order for you guys to destroy the crystals you're going to need to have them drop one of the little laser beams that they drop when you kill them after you've killed the yellow bar harpies now it's time to pick up the little laser relics the little relics with that shoot the laser are going to be used to shoot the crystals that are found within the room shoot the crystals and destroy them and then start doing as much DPS as you can at the boss that spawns in the middle. You're going to need to do this a total of three times to complete the encounter. If for some reason you're not able to get to the third wave, the game will still allow you to progress. But that is the same way you're going to do each boss. Kill the yellow harpies, pick up the crystals, destroy the crystals, shoot the boss, 
kill the boss, and rinse and repeat. Once you completed this stage, now it's time to move on to the next one. Our third stage is called Mockery. In Mockery, you're going to have a two sets of buff. You're going to have Touch of the Deep, and you're going to have Touch of the Sky. Every single time you start the encounter, you'll start off with Touch of the Sky. The Touch of the Sky will allow you to do more damage to the enemies, and in order for you guys to keep this buff, you're going to need to look for wizards that are yellow bards. Locate the wizards that are yellow bards, kill them, and once you kill them, they're going to drop a little ball. Pick up that little ball, and on the all four corners of the map, there are going to be little cylinders that are going to allow you to slam these little balls, which you will activate the Touch of Sky once again. Once you've activated the Touch of Sky on all four different corners of the map, you will then spawn a big monstrosis ogre, and this ogre is going to take a lot, a lot of damage. It's going to not only take a lot of damage, but it's going to output a lot of damage as well. The objective is to kill the ogre within the time that it gives you. If you, for some reason, aren't unable to kill the ogre with the time frame that it gives you, you'll still be able to progress, but you haven't technically completed the encounter the way it's meant to be completed. The next stage is called Repulse. Now, this one's actually quite interesting because it reminds me a lot of the Raid of Crota. For those of you who play Destiny 1, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to go to a room where there's going to be a lot, a lot of hive. You're going to kill all the hive, but there's also going to be two sets of knights. One's going to be a yellow bar knight, and one's going to be a knight that has a shield around it. You're going to have to kill the yellow knight. Once you kill the yellow knight, he will drop his sword. And you're going to use that sword to bring down the shield of the knight that has the, the white aura around it. Once you take out the aura of that knight, you're able to kill that knight with any other elements. Either be your super, your weapon, or whatever you want to shoot him with. You will be able to kill him. The sword is just meant to bring down his shield. Once you go ahead and kill that knight, there's going to be a shrieker that spawns. Shoot the shrieker. And if you do this multiple times, you will be able to complete this encounter. Remember, you are also timed within this encounter. So the faster you're able to complete it, the more likelihood you'll have it done. If for some reason you can't complete it in a timely fashion, you will still be allowed to continue, but that is the way the mechanics work. The next stage is called The Hunted. This is by far my favorite one out of all of them, just because it's so chaotic, guys. So this is basically, it's going to put you kind of like in a dungeon or in a tunnel system that it's going to be almost completely dark, but within the system or within this tunnel area, there's going to be circular paths that you have to stand on them. You're going to have to stand them for a period of a long time to actually activate the pots. Now, what makes this interesting is once you step on these pots, you're going to get a bunch of thrall coming your way. The main objective here is to hold down the pot as much as you can until it hits 100% and then move on forward to the next pot. Well, one thing that you also have to worry about is a big, super duper massive knight that spawns and he pretty much one sword kills anybody. It's like if Crota spawned in this little tunnel system and all you got to do is hold it down and pray to baby RNG that you won't get sorted or killed off the bat. So it's very interesting and very chaotic. Highly recommend a tether for this encounter. It is a lifesaver. The objective here, step on all the pots before the timer runs out and you've completed the hunted. The next stage is called the gauntlet. And this was actually pretty fun as well. Make sure this is kind of like your technical jumping puzzle stage of this area, right? So Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to go into a room. There's going to be a lot of ads. There's going to be a lot of Vex, a lot of sniper ads, which are the most annoying ones. But one of the interesting things about this is you're going to focus fire on the boss that spawns in the middle. What makes this even more interesting is after you kill the boss, you're like, yeah, I already did it, guys. He's dead. Nope, nope, nope. He's not dead, guys. <laughs> you're going to have to go ahead and do a jumping puzzle or like a gauntlet stage. Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to kill the first boss. It's going to teleport you into a gauntlet stage and you're going to have to do a little jumping puzzle that's like a maze. Once you complete that jumping puzzle, you will be brought back into the room and another boss will spawn. You're going to have to do this again for three times. If you're able to complete this in a timely fashion before the timer runs out, then you will be able to complete this encounter. If for some reason you can't complete it, you'll still be allowed to move on to the next stage, but that is the way it works. And now on to the last final stage before we meet the boss called the Arcborn. Now the Arcborn is another mechanic that's very interesting as well. You're going to be presented to the, a room that's very similar to the raid if you've done the raid. Within this room, there's going to be little soul carriers that are going to be little beams of light that are within the room. You're going to need to collect these soul carriers, and every time you collect one, it's going to give you a times one 
times two, and a times three. You're only able to stack a total of three. Once you stack a total of three, you're going to go to either the front or the back of the room where there is going to be a little vessel that you're able to deposit these souls in and deposit these souls. Once you deposit enough souls, you are then going to spawn a big, ugly boss ogre that is a monster. He's a, he's a hard hitter, boys. He hits really, really hard. The main objective here is to complete the encounter as fast as you can and deposit the souls as quickly as you can and then kill the ogre before the timer runs out. If you do so, you have completed the encounter correctly. Now, after you completed all those six stages, you are then going to meet the final boss, which is beloved by Kallus, Hasapiko. I believe I said that correctly. If I didn't, let me know how you actually pronounce it. And he is a big Vex. Now, this is a very interesting mechanics and one of the coolest ones I like. Remember, guys, each week there is going to be a brand new boss. And there's going to be a different mechanic for each boss. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to the channel. I'll be teaching you guys how to beat each individual boss when they get rotated. Now, the mechanics to this boss are actually quite easy. They're not that hard. The only thing that's a bit annoying is the ads and the snipers that spawn. So let's go ahead walk you through what's going to happen he's going to spawn in and he is going to have a shield protecting him you're not going to be able to do any damage to him what's going to happen is there's going to be yellow harpies that spawn on the left right and in the middle of the stage you're going to need to kill these harpies once you kill these harpies these harpies are going to drop a little pool you're going to want to make sure you step on that pool and that pool is going to allow you to do damage to him and bring down his shield. Once you bring down his shield, it doesn't matter if you're in the pool or not. You're able just to do a good amount of DPS. Now, what makes this interesting is once his shield is down, he gets a bit upset. And he don't like that. And then what he does is he brings out a brand new mechanic that makes you be on your moves. and makes you keep your eyes peeled because there's going to be little grids that spawn on the left, on the right, and in the center that are going to be coming at you. If for some reason... You get hit by one of these grids, it's kaboom, you're dead, and you're fried. So you're going to want to make sure you keep an eye on the grids. And while you're doing this, you're also going to make sure that you're doing as much DPS as you possibly can. Once you bring down his health to almost halfway, the mechanics change a tad bit because there's also going to be snipers on the top columns of your left and your right that are going to be trying to get and shoot your head off. In addition to that, once you get a little bit further down of his health, he doesn't no longer spawn harpies. He actually spawns the big, super huge harpy ones, the hydros, which are a bit more annoying to actually take down. But the mechanics are all the same. Kill him, the step on the little pool, and DPS him as you can. One interesting thing that I do want to point out though, as you bring down his health more and more, the grids that are actually coming at you start moving a lot faster and in different patterns. So make sure you guys are keeping your eyes wide open to notice the patterns and be able to avoid them. But overall, in general, that's what you need to look out when you're killing this final boss. And there you guys have it. That is how you complete the Menagerie this week around. Remember, for the next week, everything's going to be the same. The only thing that's going to be changing is the boss. Of course, I will have you guys completely covered on how to kill the boss. I do hope you did find this video helpful and informative. If you did, do me the huge favor, guys. Drop a like on this video. Let's try to get this video to 100 likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more Destiny content. And make sure when you do, hit that notification bell so you guys can get notified when videos go live. If you're already a sub, double check that your notification bell is ticked so you can also get notified as well when Destiny 2 videos go live. Don't forget guys, if you want to show additional love and support, make sure you guys join the Bold Nation by clicking the join button right next to the subscribe button down below right next to the video. You'll be able to enter into monthly giveaways and also earn exclusive features only found on the LaserBolt channel. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget WGATAP and I will catch you guys on the next video.